経路は大きいと言われ
Good morning. Welcome to St. Anne. We especially welcome all those who might be visiting with us today. It's such an honor to have you guys worshiping with us all together. It's so good when the family's all together here. A um, few announcements before we begin. Uh, save the date for our next Friday by the Fountain, Summer Bash. It'll be in two weeks, July 28th, 6 to 9, right out here in the courtyard. There'll be food trucks, snow cones, pickleball, dancing, music. Sounds like a good time for everybody. Bring a friend. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Our parish has such a vibrant community and is represented by so many countries. We're very diverse in this uh, Dallas area especially. And we are inviting parishioners to host a table within the tent at the carnival. So at the carnival, we're gonna have a tent uh, that showcases cultural background and Catholic heritage. So if you're interested, please reach out to the parish. Uh, we'd really love to have a, uh, all of that, all those different cultures represented and uh, we'll get you in contact with the coordinator of that tent. <coughs> okay, um, if you have not provided your feedback about the Transcend Capital Campaign, um, we're talking about some renovations that might happen in here in the church, some paint and uh, bringing a tabernacle in, etc. Um, we'd really like to get your opinion. We'd li really want to hear from you. So um, if you wouldn't mind, we would encourage you to watch Father Edwin's vision video uh, online and provide your feedback. Okay, and that's at stannparish.org forward slash transcend. Okay, that's the parish website slash transcend. Okay, so we uh, strongly encourage you to give us your feedback so that we can uh, continue to wrap this in prayer and pray for this. And uh, um, lastly, to that extent, we'd like to ask you to continue to pray for this Transcend campaign. Um, so if you'll open your, look at the back of your song sheets. We have a Transcend Campaign pr prayer, so we're going to wrap all this in prayer, so let us join together and pray. Heavenly Father, you marvelously formed our human nature, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son. To even more wondrously elevated, grant us to pray that may partakers of your divine nature. Through the Eucharist, we may be continuously transformed by the renewal of our Send forth your Holy Spirit to guide us as we work to renew our church in beauty and grandeur. Through this campaign to transcend the ordinary, draw us closer to you and one another in bonds of faith, the love of charity. Let this work be yours, not our own. For if we do not build the house, in vain do the builders labor. Through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Joseph, model of artisans. All right, please stand and let's take a moment to, uh, in, to introduce yourself to the people around you. As we begin our celebration today, let us all join singing as grains of wheat. Our celebrate for today's mass is Father Kevin Wilwert. So as we begin, let us join singing as grains of wheat. i 
Each grain must fall and give itself. It first is broken, then joined with others, makes one body and one breath. For many are we, and broken we have come, but we shall. to taste the goodness of the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you sow the seeds of mercy and reconciliation among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you shower us with mercy and kindness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the Let us pray. 
O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for their faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing for 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. 
The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. The sower went out to sow. There are, as you saw in the Missalette probably, there's a long version and a short version of the gospel today. And I, I wanted to read the long version because anytime you hear more of the gospel and less of me, it's, it's great. It's better. And also because in probably a self-serving, a little bit lazy way, it's Jesus preaches the homily. He explains the parable. And it, it remains, it's left to us to understand it in the context of our lives. So perhaps a little bit about that, about what it looks like to be a sower. Uh, I was at a meeting this past week and I met a young man who had a degree in agricultural economics from a large state school in the Bryan College Station area. <laughs> And we talked about how complex farming is now. There's the farmer in the, in the, with the tractor is plowing, he's breaking the, the furrows, he's planting the seed, he's covering the seed. All the while he's in a cab guided by GPS and he's probably hedging his crop with, with futures. It's just extraordinary what's expected of farmers today. It wasn't like that in Jesus' time. The, um, it was almost sort of like subsistence farming. And they would, the, the soil in uh, Palestine is very shallow and it's rocky. And so they would go out behind an ox or two and they would plow with basically just a metal or the hardest wood they could find and make furrows, break up the ground, and then scatter, broadcast uh, seeding and then probably come back later and cover the seeds up where they could. The sower in today's gospel is, is Christ. And he's so prodigal, he's so extravagant, he throws it everywhere. He's not careful at all. And it's, it's a reminder of the overwhelming love of God for us and for, the, for that love which, we should, which should flow from him through us to others because he makes his rain fall on the just and the unjust, and he makes the sun rise on the good and the bad. It's a reminder to us to be just like that, to pass God's blessings on to others 
And there's so many ways to look at the gospel. As ourselves, as tenders of the ground, we break, this, we break the ground, we prepare, we water, we tend, we weed the plants as best we can so the seed can take root in the lives of others, in our own lives as well. But I would ask you to think this morning specifically about what it means to be a sower. Jesus is the sower, as Kurt is saying in the gospel acclamation, and the word of God is the seed, but Jesus sows through us. Remember of Teresa, Teresa of Avila said, Christ has no hands on earth but yours, but ours. So we are the sowers of this seed. What does that look like? I would suggest to you that it, it's very broad, and I have uh, four examples briefly to share with you, and they go from a long time ago, far away, to very close and very now. So the first one is from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Silas are in, I think, Thessalonica, and Paul has been arrested. Paul's in prison again for preaching the gospel, and he's been flogged, he and Silas have been flogged, put in jail, in shackles. And so it's nighttime, they're under guard, and Paul and Silas are singing hymns and praying, and the, the scriptures say, and the other prisoners were listening. I think they were probably listening because they couldn't sleep because Paul and Silas were praying and singing. In the middle of the night, there's a terrific earthquake. The bars of the prison are cast down, the shackles on all the prisoners fall off. And once the ground stops moving, the captain of the guard runs in and sees that everything's loose, and he takes out his sword to kill himself, to take his own life because he knows his punishment for losing the prisoners is to undergo their punishment. And he just, he doesn't, this is the more honorable thing to do. So what, what would you do if that was about to happen, if you were Silas or you were Paul? I think I would say, shh, everybody. We're about to be able to sneak out. What does Paul do? Paul yells, don't harm yourself, we're all still here. That's the seed. He put that man's life ahead of his own freedom, ahead of his own life. And the captain of the guard comes in and kneels at their feet and says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Dramatic picture of sowing the seed. A lot closer to home, a lot more recently, do you remember in 2014, the Ebola scare? We had uh, someone Come international traveler did not realize he was infected and then contracted the, the symptoms here and God rest his soul died in the hospital a Presbyterian and we were ob well I was freaked out I'm sort of a recovering hypochondriac and we were all pretty crazy and the family was being threatened he had come to see his his fiance who he had hadn't seen in like 10 years and so she had to be quarantined and they weren't safe in the apartment where they were in the Vickery Meadows area of Dallas. And so finally the county commissioner's court said they are now in a safe, secluded place in quarantine and for 21 days. And so people calmed down. And I thought, for somehow I thought they were in a gated community in Addison. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe because there's so many restaurants in Addison and they could bring food to them from like 21 different places. But it, it wasn't Addison that took them in, it was us. If you'll remember, when the time of the quarantine ended, uh, it was revealed that they had been granted a place to stay by the diocese, by Bishop Farrell, who was our bishop at that time. Down in Oak Cliff, we have a conference center, Catholic Conference and Formation Center, I've spent many nights there in deacon formation. And it was originally a uh, foster home. And so there's lots of big houses all spread on this, these properties. They gave, the bishop put them in one of those houses and they were protected by Dallas law enforcement and cared for. And a lot of people were sort of stunned. And one of the reporters at the press conference said, Bishop, don't you know these people aren't Catholic? And Bishop Farrell said, we don't help people because they're Catholic. We help people because we're Catholic. We are there to spread that seed, to do what Jesus would have done, to spread the seed of the gospel. 
Even closer to home, even more recent, last week, about 120, 140 young people from our parish high schoolers went down to Laredo and for a mission trip. Very brave um, parents went with them to help them, to keep them out of trouble. Extremely brave and holy priests went with them to help them fix things. And they, they split up like 10 or 12 different projects and they're all over, I think, Webb County. And people who used to be able to look up at night and see the sky through their roof can't do that anymore because our parish funded and these young people went down and sowed the seed of God's love. They had vacation Bible school and they found people to come all the way from North Texas to teach them that God loves them, to share the love of God. It's an extraordinary thing that our people do, our young people, and that we support. It's sowing the seeds. And sometimes we get to see the seed come to fruition. At this Mass, in just a moment, we will uh, celebrate the acceptance of, of several of our brother, sister and brother Christians, and they will be confirmed and receive Eucharist for the first time. We get to see, sometimes we're always sowing the seed, we're always called, no matter what we do, sometimes we get to see it flower and come to fruit. So, I would ask you this week, to think about sowing the seed of the gospel in obvious ways sometimes, like Bishop Farrell, in ways that are hidden, like acts of kindness. Those aren't empty if they're done for God and for the greater glory of his kingdom. So when we go out, I won't remember to say it when I, with the sending forth, but go out to sow the seed of the word of God. Before we profess our faith, we are blessed today to have several candidates for the sacrament of initiation. They are baptized in, in a denomination other than the Catholic Church, but desire to become Catholic. And so I invite Kent, Timothy, Michael, and Pamela to please come forward with your sponsors. Of your own free will have you asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you in the presence of the community to profess your Catholic faith. In this faith you will be one with us for the first time at Eucharist, uh, at the Eucharist table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of church's unity. So at this time, I ask everybody to please stand for the profession of the creed. And so we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the whole adored Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our state, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, live in life, who receives from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kent, Timothy, Michael, and Pamela, please repeat after me the oath of faith. I believe and profess 
all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Kent, Timothy, Michael, and Pamela, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. So, dear brothers and sisters, please welcome Kent, Timothy, Michael, and Pamela into our church. Congratulations. Today we are also blessed to have a baptized Catholic desiring to receive the sacraments of confirmation and Holy Eucharist. So Mary Kate, please come forward with your sponsor. Dear candidates, please join in me in the renunciation of sin and profession of faith. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of, of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So dearly beloved, let us now pray to God the Father Almighty for these his adopted sons and daughters already born again into eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts through his anointing, confirm them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought you these servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. All this for me. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Matthew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Isidore, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Therese, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dimphna, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Please welcome those newly confirmed into this church. And now let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, may God give us the grace to sow seeds of goodness and tend the soil of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders in government, may God grant them hearts of understanding and conversion to the gospel of life, we pray to the Lord. For farmers and all who work to grow and produce the food we eat, we pray to the Lord. 
that the call to serve Christ and his church in the priesthood and consecrated life will fall on the rich soil of hearts prepared by prayer, hard work, and generous service. We pray to the Lord. For those traveling on missions or vacations this summer, that they may enjoy God's protection on their journey and return home fresh and renewed. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and for all those who care for them, may God's grace bring them healing and strength, especially those whose names are on the prayer chain. We pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may God welcome them to eternal rest in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that you hear our prayers and that you love us. We ask that you answer them according to your most holy and perfect will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and angels and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edinburgh, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Sweet. 
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.
Thank you.